been long relief. He's pretty done well. But as a starter, he's kind of struggled. ERA over four, slightly over four. He's had control issues, 20 walks and 40 innings, and I really would like him to rediscover that hard sinker he threw when he came up a couple years ago. And the defense, Alexis defense for your Metsies boy, Nito's getting a lot of playing time. And I'm sure he's happy about that. McNeil back at second base. Mark Canna out in left field. Nito starting for the fifth straight game, 10 of the last 11. James McCann is on the men, had a couple of hits on rehab yesterday. David Peterson set to go. John Birdie leads off first pitch of the afternoon, swung and missed, and we're underway. Birdie, four for 13 in this series. He has been a pest against the Mets as he always has been, but he's doing it against everybody this year, hitting 282, 382 on base percentage, getting a chance to play with injuries to Joey Wendell and Brian Anderson, and he grounds one down to Escobar, who boots it, and it's in the left field, and Birdie's aboard to start the game. Tough second hop for Escobar, couldn't handle it cleanly, and Birdie at first base. I think it got his finger or something there, a wrist. The ball came out. That's a bad hop. That's a tough air. Got him on the wrist. You can't do anything about the bad hops. They're so rare in today's game. It will be an error charge to Escobar, so Peterson immediately has. A speedy base runner to contend with. Birdie's already stolen four bases in this series. And now Jazz Chisholm, who's hitting just 100 against left handers this year, three for 30, really epitomizes Miami's difficulties against left handed pitching. Well, that third hit was a inside out double down the left field line. Wasn't it off of a left hander last, last night's ball game? Yes, sir. Oh, it was off Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yes. yes. Big RBI double drove in a, that sixth run. Three on the right side against Chisholm. Who was up among the league leaders in slugging percentage. In fact, he's ninth in the league in slugging. 13 home runs this year. Two for 10 in this series. And there was that sinker you were asking for, Keith. On the hands of Chisholm. He has the sinker when he throws his changeup. And there's a good slider by Peterson. That has been his key pitch this year. In at bats that end in a slider, the opposition's hitting 136 against Peterson this year, 299 last year. So a huge step forward for Peterson with that pitch. And a snap throw, and he picks off Bernie. How about that? I David don't. Peterson, the step off and snap throw, and Bernie is picked off first. And that's the first out of the day. They're going to see if they're going to. Oh, he got him. Did he get his hand back? Let's see. Pete tags him around the waist. Hard to tell there. He had the calculus perfect on the tag. Yes, he did. Yep, he I, got him. I loved your. Uh, I loved your interview with Pete before the game. One and two to Chisholm and a half swing did he go he did not two and two I I'm just envisioning him strapped into a capsule those tiny little capsules <laughs> like they had back in the Mercury and Gemini projects yes he would never fit he'd be too big to be an astronaut he'd never fit in a submarine too he <laughs> couldn't go up he couldn't go down he's pretty good right on dry land where he is <laughs> two and two to Chisholm with Jorge Soler on deck. And Chisholm moves his feet on the fastball. It's three and two. I always see number 12 when I always think of Jimmy Davenport, third baseman for the Giants when I was a kid growing up. You don't think of Ronnie? Well, Ronnie had 44. He changed numbers all the time. It's hard to keep track. Lindora throws out Chisholm for the second out. I'm just trying to keep it, you know, keep the family happy here. <laughs> I mean, when I think of 17, there's only one person I think of, and that's Luis Lopez. I, you know, <laughs> I can understand that, yeah. Two out and nobody on. See, the thing about Luis, I don't know if you remember Luis Lopez when he was the Mets, but he could imitate anybody's batting stance. So he could probably do you so he could be himself and yourself at the same time. Here's Jorge Soler DHing today, and he grounds one off the third base bag, and that'll be a base hit for Soler. 
Well, Escobar having himself quite a day. They banked one off his wrist, and now they hit one off the cushion in front of him. And Solaire's got a two-out hit. Escobar's got a <laughs> feeling he's in a under a mortar attack. And it's like full moon. I have not seen something like that happen in a very long time with a ball. It goes up in the air that high. I think he was going to have that ball behind the bag. I don't know if he could have thrown Solaire out, but he was in line to pick it off. And <laughs> he's got to figure they're aiming for him now. For David Peterson, by the way, his second pick off this season, the fifth of his career. That's a nice weapon for him. Here's Garrett Cooper, who sat out yesterday. He's had a terrific month of June, hitting 415 this month, 313 overall, which is fifth best in the National League, having his finest season. And Cooper gets jammed up and in, ball one. So it's ironic, yesterday, Don Mattingly, we noted he took Cooper and Solaire out of the lineup. It's two big bats, and they wind up scoring six runs and get a win. Well, did he count on Encarnacion hitting a grand <laughs> slam in its big league debut? That was the difference in the game. Change up outside to Cooper, and it's 2 0. And, and uh, very impressed with Alcantara, who we've seen before, but he's still uh, improving every year. He's not like a 10 year veteran. I'm so impressed with his. Composure and demeanor on the mound uh, yesterday. Three and out of Cooper. Well, the thing about Alcantara is, no matter what happens on the previous pitch, he's ready to throw the next one. And that's a it's kind of a throwback mentality. Not much of a lead. Well, he's already seen a guy get picked off. Cooper takes a fastball for a strike. You know, Solaire is not a threat to steal, so it, it, you know that's a very conservative lead, a safe lead. It's all about when the pitcher breaks from the belt and throws home that you break off the bag and increase or decrease the distance to second base. And that catches the corner. Good slider by Peterson on the back door, and it's three and two. So does he take a good secondary lead? When that he can get a bigger lead than that. Notice. He could come out a little more too. Hey, in these day games, we see a lot of guys. It takes a while to get the cobwebs out. Well, he's going to be running now with three and two and two out. And Cooper goes down swinging. Nasty slider by Peterson to strike him out and end the inning. Helped out by the pickoff, no score. Okay. Or, well, I'll tell you what. Perfect day to be in the ballpark. Nemo's uh, walk-up music that'll wake you up on a day <laughs> game. Here's your guy goes starting lineup. J.D. Davis in a D.H. Otherwise, the usual array for the Mets as they go up against Trevor Rogers, who had their number over the last. Year plus. Yep, four starts, Gary, against the Mets, all here at City Field, 2 0, 1.35 earn run average. Oh, 20 innings pitched against the Metsies, only given up three runs. Well, he could use some of that because it has not been a good sophomore year for Trevor Rogers after a wonderful rookie season last year. Brandon Nimmo slips one to the gap in right center. That's down for a base hit, and it'll go all the way back to the wall. Nimmo scooting to second, and he'll stop there with a leadoff double. So Brandon, who had been lugging around an 0 for 11, jumps on the second pitch he sees from Rogers and drills a double. And the Mets are in business in the first inning. Well, we noted first ball, he kind of ambushed him there. That Brandon had been kind of pulling the ball a little bit, hit the ball, hitting the ball on the ground to the right side of the infield. His last at bat last night, it was an obvious that he was working to the left field. He wound up making, hitting a line drive at the left fielder. So that's probably progress right there, and that is certainly a good sign. 11th double of the year for Nimmo. And that'll bring up Starling Marte with a runner in scoring position. Starling, six games since coming back from the quad injury, seven for 21. So he's been doing well. And he swings at a high fastball from Rogers. We were impressed with Rogers' a poise last year. He pitched out of some jams where he didn't fold his tent. So he's got guts. He's just got this sophomore jinx working, and I firmly believe in a sophomore jinx. 
I mean he could not have been better last year sidelined by a couple of injuries limited to 25 starts the butt is foul from Marte. Today's Marlins uh, defense brought to you by uh, Volkswagen. You've got John Birdie at third base. There have been eight players that have played third base for this Marlin team. And out in the outfield, Luke Williams getting a second start out there. And we saw the arm of Encarnacion. He had, a, he had an assist last night. He gunned down Nito trying to stretch, his, uh, stretch it into a double. Yes, Chisholm back with the cool shades that he had early in the game yesterday. 0 2 to Marte. And the fastball misses inside 1 and 2. Trevor Rogers last year finished second to Jonathan India of the Reds in the Rookie of the Year balloting. 2.64 ERA. Only allowed six home runs in 133 innings last year. Well, he's already allowed nine this year. Yeah. His walks are up, his strikeouts are down, his home run rate is way up. Hit down to third. Oh, nice. Backhand birdie dropped it. Recovers. The throw is not in time. Marte able to beat it out. Birdie in checking. Nimmo at second dropped the ball, and that cost him the play at first. And that's how the, but the Mets trademark has been this year. Is this team really busts down the line? And let's see what happens with Birdie here in the backhand. Well, Marte still not oh. running 100 percent down the line, but he was still able to beat it out. Bad exchange there, and he did beat it. So he's still not running 100 percent, but still busting. Yeah, he's, you know? going, he's going 85. Boy, that's me at full speed. I, 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 did, I couldn't even get there. <laughs> I bet a 5 3 on your scorecard. So, an error on each third baseman in the first inning. The Mets have two men on for Lindor, who's driven in seven runs in the first three games of this series. And there's a good slider from Rogers to start him off. Lindor now with 52 runs batted in, tied for third in the National League. 11 home runs. And Rodgers had him. Nimmo was frozen, but Rodgers held the ball. Chisholm was there to cover. Rodgers made the turn, but for some reason decided not to release it. Oh, he did. Good chance. Broken bat, little number past the pitcher. Oh boy. The scoop by Cooper, not in time. And the Mets have the bases loaded. What manner of full moon for this day game. Busted bat, got it past the pitcher. Cooper did a nice job picking it up, but Rodgers couldn't dance to the bag ahead of Lindor. And an infield single loads him up. Well, Rogers' mistake was not going directly to the bag. And here's the swing. He, he's fooled off the end of the bat. Now watch Rogers off the mound. He breaks to the ball. He should have went right to the bag. You know, and your first baseman can yell verbally, I got it. it's mine, it's mine. But once he made the break to the ball, he's not going to get there. By the time he got there, he was twisted like a pretzel, turning, barehanding, couldn't get to the bag. So a double and error and a broken bat infield hit load the bases for Pete Alonso, who has never had a hit against Trevor Rogers, 0 for 10. You know, Pete's been bring comes into the game with a 196 BA against uh, left-hand pitching, and that is uh, over 56 at bats. He already has a grand slam in this series. Comes up with the bases loaded his first at bat today and fouls off a fastball. Go back to that ball hit by Marte. Watch the bat hop coming. Well, he overran it. It kind of kind of took a shot to the left a little bit away from the line. And yet he had it in his glove. Three on the left side back at double play depth. And Alonzo lays off the change up and it's one and one. He looks a little in between against left handers uh, trying to wait. 
He's either out in front or just a tick behind. And that's the reason why he's on the interstate against lefties. But still, very dangerous. Four home runs and 56 at bats against lefties. Buck said the other day that Pete gets so excited to see left handers that he gets more in chase mode than he does against right handers. He's got a drop anchor. And he lays off an up and away fastball, and it's two and one. He now leads the major leagues in RBIs with 63, one ahead of Jose Ramirez, who's missed the last couple of days for the Red Hot Guardians. 115 of 19. Leaderboard stop brought to you by your local Ford stores. You know, okay, number number two is in the National League. Paul Goldschmidt's behind him by four. Come on. <laughs> you don't like this mixing of the leagues. No, and that's where we're headed, you know that. I know. Nemo at third, Marte at second, Lindor at first. Outstanding speed all over the bases for Alonzo. Playing pretty much straight away in the outfield. And Pete drives one foul down the right side. And it's two and two. Your bounty quick stats, quite a drop off for Trevor Rogers. He was just wonderful last year. And it's said maybe four good starts out of a dozen. But the last five starts, he has an 8.02 ERA. Given yeah. four runs and three and two thirds in Philadelphia's last time, he walked six batters. He actually got a win out of those one of those four starts. Two and two to Alonzo, Marcana on deck. And Pete takes the breaking ball that just missed low, and it's three and two. That's a tough take. Pete for a slugger, and he's a slugger, has a good knowledge of the strike zone. He'll chase once in a while, but don't we all? And uh, in more ways than one. Mets is a team this year hitting 391 with the bases loaded, two grand slams. They both belong to Alonzo. Rogers has to come into him now on three and two. And Pete fouls it back another no. slider. I tell you what, that was a outside corner backdoor slider, and for him to foul that back and stay in the at bat, that's impressive. I just like that shoulder logo, the circular Met logo on the shoulder. Always love that. It's been around for 60 years. I love it. I wore that proudly. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming from Rogers to Alonzo. And Pete goes down swinging on a high fastball. Good pitch by Rogers to go upstairs and strike him out for the first out. Fastball up. Good cut, but just under it. Good pitch. You know, there was a day when you'd say a pitch upstairs, that was a you got away with one, but not today. In today's game. So now Marcana, who had most of yesterday off, pinch hit late in the game and fly it out. But over the last 12 games, Mark has a 480 on base percentage, and he bats here with the bases loaded and one out. Marcana starts the day ninth in the National League in batting. His first ever look at Rogers in a regular season game. And the first pitch slider has him swinging, nothing in one. So he chose today to go after the first pitch. You never know with Canna if he's going to, he takes a lot of pitches. He mixes it up. Canna's raised his on base percentage to 385, which is fifth in the league. Three on the left side against him. He takes the change up down, a ball and a strike. That's in general have perked up against lefties. They were four and eight to start the season against lefties. They've now won ten of their last twelve when a lefty starts against them. Still hitting about twenty points higher against righties than lefties as a team. Trying to cash in early against Rodgers. After a double and then a 
couple of plays on the infield, an error and an infield hit. And that one missed the 27th run batted in. And now the Mets will try and add to it with J.D. Davis. J.D. DHing today. Pinch hit yesterday and made the last out of the game, grounding out. Two for eight in this series. Marte now at third, Lindor at second, Canna at first, and J.D. goes after a first pitch fastball. 97, nothing and one. Well, the Mets first inning here, day game, coming out of the shoot, swinging the bats. Nemo hit the second pitch to right center for a double. Canna and Davis both swing at the first pitch. Infield back at double play depth straight up against J.D. And a half swing and he went around on that fastball on its 0 and 2. Well right handers have been hitting 284 against Rogers and he's given up of his. Nine home runs, eight have been to the right handers. Probably the most important stat against Rodgers. They're hitting 283 against him with runners in scoring position. So he hasn't had the out pitch last year. Just seemed as though he was always able to make that big pitch. And he strikes out Davis on three fastballs. And that's the second out. You saw the high target given by Stallings behind the plate. Pitch you know, every, as high as he wanted it. I mean, you've met fans. You've been watching forever. We know that, that people want to pitch JD upstairs, that he has difficulty there. And there's apparent. They went three straight fastballs, not even messing around. All up in the strike zone, Gary. No, Rogers not out of the woods yet. He's got to face Jeff McNeil with the bases loaded, and Jeff is the best hitter in <laughs> baseball with runners in scoring position this year, hitting 4-11. And Jeff, who got off to a really bad start against left handers, has really picked it up. Up to 292 for the year. Breaking ball drilled out to left, but right at Williams, and he's got it. That retires the side, and Rogers fortunate to give up just the one run. Mets lead 1 0 after one. Illinois. Go to SNY.tv slash CHR to enter. Good luck, Kevin. And all the folks in Menonk. <laughs> That's quite a name, Menonk. Menonk. Miguel Rojas leads off in the second against David Peterson. Fastball on the outside corner, nothing and one. Rojas three for ten in this series. He's hitting just 186 against lefties. Bad cut at a slider, and it's nothing in two. Well, Peterson's coming out with a real sh nice, sharp slider. He's keeping it down. It's very effective back foot slider to the right hand hitters, Gary. Pitch he's throwing 25% of the time this year, and we told you in the first inning just how good the results have been, especially compared to last year for David. It's one of the reasons his overall results have been so good. It's grounded toward the hole, past a dive of both mm. Escobar and Lindor. And that would come under the heading of a seeing eye base hit. No, you can't call it a seeing eye base hit because it was hit hard. But it was well placed. I, I love mean, it. When one guy dives to his left and another guy dives to his right and neither one touches the ball. He hit it hard. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a hitter. I feel good about that. I think you should feel good about any hit. It was fun to watch too because I, I, you watched Escobar break to his left and dive and Right behind him, Lindor. It was a beautiful sight from our angle, Gare. Love it. Here's Jacob Stallings, the catcher, one for eight in this series. And Stallings is hitting just 192 against lefties. I'm looking up and down this Miami lineup, and the only guy who has decent numbers against lefties is Garrett Cooper, whom Peterson struck out to end the first inning. He's hitting over 300 against left handers. Do you think Ralph Kiner would have called him Garrett Cooper? He might have called him Gary Cooper. <laughs> Little floater in left field, and that's going to fall for a base hit. Stallings got one right off his hands. So a seeing eye hit. And a door. And a blue pit. A door. Well, thank you very much. Hit. Jammed big time. 
But hang with them. So now, the yesterday's hero and uh, hero for all time, as far as major league debuts are concerned, Gerard Encarnacion, the 24-year-old from the Dominican Republic, made his major league debut yesterday. He threw out a runner at second base, and then with his team down one nothing in the seventh, he drove a grand slam for his first big league hit. First player ever to have an outfield assist on a grand slam in his first big league game. What can he do for an encore? I had a hunch they were going to lead him off with a breaking ball. Seth Lugo felt as though he threw a pretty good pitch to Encarnacion. He figured, you know, if he's going to hit it out of the park, he's going to have to pull it. Right. So he threw him a sinker on the outside part of the plate, and Encarnacion went right with it. Got it up a little bit, a belt high, a little below the belt. But you're right, it was outside corner and tip your hat. He went with it. Well, this was after the game. Hugging his cousin, whom he grew up with. And part of this was also the emotion of Encarnacion having lost his brother three years ago. His brother always encouraged him to be a big leaguer, so he and his cousin having quite a moment after the game. Diving stop by Escobar from his knees out at second, and no relay by. McNeil so Escobar who has been sorely tested early in this game comes up with that and makes a pretty play to get the force on Stallings for the first down. It certainly has been the hot corner. This was another non seeing eye dog. Didn't quite have the the 2015 vision of the Rojas hit. <laughs> See the tears. Oh, emotional. I mean, just making it to the big leagues is emotional enough, but to have a day like that. I walked into the clubhouse, the Marlin clubhouse, after the game and said, say hi to Don Mattingly, and the uh, Latin press was all around him, and uh, he was giving interviews uh, 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 in, Spanish, in Spanish, of course. He was surrounded by reporters. As one would expect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he stole a base also in yesterday's game, but he's not getting a big lead after watching Birdie get picked off by Peterson earlier. Brian De La Cruz takes change up off the plate, and it's two and zero. De La Cruz shows a good eye at the plate. I mean, he's a, he's he's an aggressive hitter, but he take he's taken some close pitches to impress me in this series. With Williams on deck. De La Cruz hitting just 139 against lefties. And he takes a hack of the fastball and it's two and one. And that was his pitch to hit. There's that pitch up in the strike zone. Rojas at third and Carnacion at first with one out. It's tilted toward the left at double play depth. Slider runs inside and it's three and one. I don't think they'll run the big guy at first base. They don't want to strike him out, throw him out here. Let's see how De La Cruz, like a lot of the right hand hitters in this lineup, has backward splits. Sometimes managers like to run three and one because it's a good pitch to hit. And Fort Mattingly chooses not to, and good call. And Peterson keeping that fastball away from De La Cruz. Now it's three and two, and see if he will run it to try and stay out of the double play. I just don't think he'll run him because it's a left-hander out there. You've got a young kid doesn't know anything about Peterson. His move not going, and it's strike three. Call got him looking at a fastball. Set him up with the fastballs away, came in to get him looking for the second out. Another second strikeout for David. Another failure by the Marlins uh, to get a runner in. And that's too close to take. That is a strike. Home plate umpire Alan Porter ringing it up. Alan Porter's a good umpire. One of the best. And he's fit too. So now Luke Williams, the number nine hitter, 0 for 6 in this series, getting a start in left field today. He can run. 
and looking to bunt and Rojas came about 25 feet down the line and scampered back. It was a good idea. McNeil was up the middle. You could you could push it past him. You got a base hit and an RBI. Oh Rojas, be careful. Rojas get picked off. Escobar wasn't in position to get back to the bag. Otherwise, Nito might have thrown behind him. Well, quick pitch there, and that's in for a strike. Slight step by Peterson. Now it's one and one. Peterson's fastball, he locates that that four seamer straight fastball in the inside corner to right hand as well. It's just he's lost that fastball sinker that he can use the other half of the plate, which is being set up by that inside fastball and his hard slider. Williams goes after the changeup and misses, and it's one and two. Now Peterson, after giving up a couple of soft hits to start the second inning, now has a path to get through it. Ahead one and two on the former Philly and Giant Luke Williams. One two coming. Struck in. Peterson with back to back strikeouts to strand the tying run in third. One nothing New York in the second. First time this year leads off against Trevor Rogers in the home second and swings over a first pitch breaking ball nothing and one Escobar trying to snap an 0 for 21 skid first time he's hit eighth since 2017 Buck dropping him down in the order till he can get his back going again Tomas Nito on deck and then Brandon Nimmo against Rogers he gave up an unearned run in the first and was Able to steal himself and not allow any more. Slider in the dirt, one and two. Escobar has done far better from this side of the plate. He's hitting 296 right handed, just 200 left handed. Change up in the dirt, and it's two and two. Trevor Rogers, 24 years old, cousin of former Marlin Cody Ross. Grew up in New Mexico. And strike three call, fastball on the inside corner at the knees gets Escobar for the first out. So one out and nobody out. We check in with Steve Gelf. Welcome back, Steve. Good to be back, Gary. And I know I missed Father's Day yesterday, but if you don't mind, one more story regarding Father's Day today. It is about Eduardo Escobar, who, yes, is struggling at the plate right now. But, guys, we've talked about it ad nauseum. You're not going to find a better person in the game today than Eduardo Escobar. And, you know, I think this story about his father personifies that. We talked about this early in the season that Eduardo Escobar's father abandoned his family when Escobar was just a toddler. It left his mother really struggling to make ends meet for him and his siblings. But Escobar is a very religious guy, and the Bible says, honor thy father. So when Escobar made it, not only did he reconnect with his father, not only did he forgive his father, but now he takes care of his father as well and has him living with him in his house. Oh. It takes a big man to be able to do something like that. And there's Eduardo with his dad. Heart is capable of great things. Yes. And forgiveness is sometimes the most difficult. Nito tops one down toward third. Birdie gets a nice hop to handle and throws out Nito two out. Well, will it be one of those games? Mets had Rogers on the ropes and he showed some guts that we saw last last year in him. He can pitch in trouble for a 24 year old guy, second year in the big leagues. Pulled out of that jam, bases loaded, nobody out. And only gave up one run. Here's Brandon Nimmo who drove a double to right center and scored the Mets run in the first inning. Snapped an 0 for 11 stretch. 
And he takes a fastball off the play for ball one. I don't know if we said this last year. Maybe we did. When you look at Trevor Rogers on the mound, just in terms of his stature and the way his his shoulders sit, looks a lot like Jim Abbott. Oh, good call. Right? Yes. He is all of 6'5, 217 pounds. He's a big guy, long legs. A little bit of John Lester, but more like Abbott. Change up misses low and into Nimmo, two balls and a strike. I mean, you can't have a better rookie season than he did last year, and who knows how guys get out of sync. It's a big guy, struggles with his mechanics occasionally, but it seemed like last year, every time he struggled, he was able to self correct immediately. And this year, maybe not so much. And Nimmo takes a change up for a strike, and it's two and two. Well, this whole umpiring crew here, and we got a new umpire today in Jose Navas, but that borderline strike, they've been just that little, just that tiny little borderline strike. It, they've been giving it to the pitcher. How does that make you feel, Keith? You swing the bat, like in Frank Pulley, and get an umpire to call strikes. Well, sometimes it's the best medicine. Get up there and you got a hack. I've always thought that. Best thing for the game would be for umpires to call every borderline pitch a strike. I would intend uh, at, at tight situations, maybe tighten it up and call it correctly. Rogers handles the comebacker from Nimmo. He has a one, two, three second. And after two, one nothing. Two in Houston, three in Miami. John Birdie leads off against David Peterson and takes a slider low and in. Birdie. Hit a ground ball to third that went off the heel of Escobar's glove for an error, but then Birdie got picked off first base. And that was a, uh, a most pleasing development for the Mets, considering how much of a pest Birdie has been. You know, there are certain guys over the years, the Chipper Joneses, the Willie Stargells, Correct. who have just manhandled the Mets. But then you got guys like this who just get under your skin. The little pesky hitters. Right. The Reed Johnsons. Brett Butlers. The little field mice. <laughs> That's a call strike to I say that if I mean, I was not going to characterize <laughs> him as a field mouse. But, if, you know, you were entitled to go there. Uh, it's just, I, I say it affectionately. <laughs> I love those kind of players. Wally Backman, Lenny yeah, Dykstra's, you right. know? Love those. Pete Rose wasn't a big guy. Chopper off the plate. Tough play for Peterson. He jumped, throws it to first on a hop, uh -huh. not in time. Nice effort by Peterson, trying his best Derek Jeter. But Birdie's aboard with an infield hit. Birdie comes, he's got, he's got a magic wand. See what I mean? Pest. Just chopped it off the plate. Did Pete have to come up? He would have beat it anyway, it looked like. Tough hop for Pete. You kind of want to go and stretch for that ball, but it was that in between hop if you do so. Let's see what kind of lead Birdie takes this time. He's been taking huge leads this entire series, but then he got picked off by Peterson. He's still got a pretty yeah, big one. Yeah, he knows where he needs to be. And he was moving back to the bag as Peterson threw that first pitch to Chisholm for a strike. John Birdie leads the National League with 18 steals. He had four at the end of May. He has 14 in June, getting a chance to play now. And the sinker misses a ball to strike. Peterson is unfamiliar. He had Sometimes you get the base runners out there to get a super big lead just to draw a throw to get a look at the move. Peterson's only had one form one appearance against the Marlins in his career. Oh quick home slide step and he gets the slider in for a strike and it's one and two he's shown a good slide step early in this game. This is the pick the move when, uh, the lead when he got picked off. Uh, a little half step back huh. 
So one thing that Peterson doesn't do and I think every left hander is taught. You cannot your lift foot which would be his right foot that he lifts up the point home stride home can't go behind the rubber. That would be a dead giveaway. Yeah, but the guys with the best move they hang that left leg right make you think that they're going home and then come to first now Bob McClure comes to mind. Terry Mulholland. Oh and Chisholm is nailed that got him in the kidney. Mm. Peterson not happy at all with that. I got him in the hip. Yeah, He's he's hurting. That's that's bone. It's a, got a little bone bruise there. Excuse me. Chisholm getting no medical attention will walk slowly down to first and the Marlins have the first two men on in the third. Ouch. Yeah, I got him in the hip already. I got the bone too. So that's a big ouch. You got him above the hip bone. Yeah it looks like it. So it's yeah. a little bit of the flesh. So and here's Soler with two men on that infield hit his first time up. And he takes the first pitch slider down for ball one. There's so a big spot for Peterson. He's got three and four hitters now with two men on. <laughs> That's that a very effective down breaking ball of Peterson, but Soler took it, so he's ahead in the count. And now behind two and zero, oh. and Nito's going to run it out to Peterson. Peterson gets a man on base. He tends to overthrow. Good time for Nito to come, go out and talk to him. Mets won the first two games of the series. Lindor had that keynote three run homer with his mom in the stands for the first time on Friday. Alonzo capped the uh, the big inning with a grand slam. And then Lindor had a two run homer. Taiwan Walker was wonderful on Saturday. Yesterday, Gerard Encarnacion turning the game around after a great pitcher's duel between Chris Bassett and Sandy Alcantara. And now the Mets trying to make it three out of four in this series. That's have won 15 series, lost three, and split two. Solaire goes after a changeup and misses, and it's two and one. And we always see that now: two and zero, oh, three and one. It's always a second, most of the time, a secondary pitch. Now Solaire, dangerous hitter, guy who once hit 48 home runs in a season, last year's World Series MVP with the Braves. Well, he's and he goes after a high change up that time and misses and it's two and two. solaire has got 12 home runs this year so. He's going to be up. In that 30 home run range gear. Eric Cooper on deck. Peterson's got five ground ball double plays this year. And he strikes him out with a slider. So Peterson, after falling behind two and zero, oh, gets Solaire with two changeups and a slider, and that's his fourth strikeout. Well, he's got a good slider operating today. Well, wow. he's got that index finger over the arc of that seam. So one out now Cooper who struck out his first time up. He gave you that number before in at bats that end with a slider this year the batting average against David Peterson is 136. Mm -hmm. Last year it was 299. So a huge improvement in the effectiveness of that pitch. Birdie not too far off the bag. McNeil trying to make sure of that. Well remember Birdie stole third base in this series. And you got great speed at both second and first, so double steal certainly in play. Yeah, they're holding him as tight as can be. Double. Cooper takes a fastball for a strike. See, he darts that fastball, that four seamer inside against the right handers. Particularly today, it's been a very effective pitch. This is Peterson's second career start against the Marlins. His first one came his rookie year two years ago. He pitched five effective innings. Got a win. Cooper slices one to right, but Marte hustles in, reaches up to grab it. Birdie tags it second. He'll go on to third. So that's the second out. 
Marte almost came yep. in too far. He broke in and that ball could have gotten over his head. But it did not. Good base running by Birdie. You know, wild pitch, he scores. Pass ball, air in the field. Now the question is if Chisholm takes off from first, what do you do? Do you throw it through or do you let him take it? I just, what I don't see anymore, Gary used to work on in spring training, we had three plays a throw through or the catcher throws to the pitcher or the middle infielder comes in halfway and catches the ball, you know, 15 feet in front of the bag. Right. And you don't see that anymore. You can also throw to third. Try and Gary Carter was the there. best at faking yeah. and throwing to third. There's Rojas who snuck one through the left side for a base at his first time up. And fastball up and away for ball one. Now, you know, the problem that one play I talked about by throwing in the infielder, middle infielder comes in and gets it 15 in front of the bag. If you look where the infielders are positioned right now, they couldn't get there on a stolen base. So far back and away. They can't get there. McNeil, maybe. He's at least closer to the bag than Lindor. But then you risk. You know, vacating your position and opening up the whole right side of the infield. And especially against a guy like Rojas, who is so adept at going the other way. Rojas, four for 11 in this series, always seems to save his best for the Mets. Birdie at third, Chisholm at first, 2 and 0 to Rojas. And he chases a fastball, and it's 2 and 1. Peterson's had trouble to work with in it all three innings. Lead off base runner in the first. He picked off Birdie. First two men on in the second. He was able to work around that. First two men on in the third. And he's two thirds of the way home. Rojas hits it sharply, but right at McNeil. And Peterson finds his way out of trouble again. Adeptly done by David Peterson as he strands two more. One nothing Mets in the third. Starling Marte leads off the home third inning against Trevor Rogers. Marte reached on an error his first time up. And he takes a slider for a strike. Marte, Lindor, and Alonzo, two, three, and four in the order. And fastball pops in for a strike, and it's 0 and 2. It's got an unearned run in the first inning. The error proving costly when Canada drew a bases loaded walk to drive in a run, but the Mets then left the bases loaded and Rogers worked to one, two, three, second. Meanwhile, the Marlins have threatened in every inning against David Peterson, who has been up to the task. So both these pitchers living dangerously early on, and there's been just the one unearned run. Rogers thrown a first pitch strike to Nine of the first ten hitters. Swing and a miss, and he strikes out Marte. It's his fourth strikeout. You know, his most effective pitch so far has been his fastball there. We've got Davis on three in a row. So one out of Lindor has got a fresh bat after having his explode his first time up. Get a little. Ground ball that got past the pitcher and he was able to beat it out for an infield hit. Francisco now four for 12 in this series with seven driven in. And he takes a fastball low and in for ball one. Trevor Rogers made his big league debut against the Mets August of 2020 through four shutout innings that day. And the Mets really haven't touched him since. But the rest of the league has, at least they have so far in 2021. And Lindor swings over a good changeup, and it's two and one. There you go again. It is the the big change in the game today. You know, particularly two and zero, oh, three and one, not a guarantee fastball. And there's a knob. Interesting knob. Of Lindor. It's a little wider than your average knob. 
They used to flare out the knobs of the old style. Three and one to Francisco, and he hits one in the air to the right, the left field line, and overcomes Williams for a look, and it goes out of play. Three and two. Um, I'm wondering why you would want a knob to be that. I don't. After I, all, it only makes the bat heavier, and there, it, it it serves no purpose. I don't think it's not that the weight is not going to have any issue down there at that end of the bat. The weight you feel is on the barrel. Right. Um, I I don't understand what. The theory is behind that. To be honest, I understand the one that Pete uses in McNeil. Right. Pete's got the axe handle that's nubbed off the end of the bat. Chisholm has to hurry it and gets Lindor by a stride. Two out. He's got the axe handle and um, you know McNeil's got no knob. This is an entirely different concept. Uh, maybe uh, on the airplane or tom tomorrow. I'm going to go ask him about his knob. About that, uh, what what's behind that? What's the purpose behind it? How well, how does it make it feel? Two out of nobody on here's uh, Alonzo who struck out his first time up. <laughs> the angled knob of. Pete Alonzo's bat. There's a name for that. What is it? Th that that style that Pete has. Well, it's called the, the the generic term is axe handle. That's right. But there's a um, there's a uh, a brand name which escapes me right now that Pete actually uses. I kind of understand uh, that the principle behind that. I actually put that bat in my hand. It does make you throw that barrel out for right. some reason. Well, because yeah. Well, especially if you're down on the end, which he's not right now. Well, I just uh, I need to have a visual here if I'm going to feel explain to the folks what I think it does. I've had the bat in my hand, and I have one in my hand now. Look at that! Asking, you shall receive. Well, we we'll watch Pete first, not me. He's got two strikes on him. Well, hopefully this won't be a strike. And then you can demonstrate. There you go. Okay. So I first of all let me show you, right? This is the axe handle. So I put it in my hand, and I'm pretty sure it makes me feel like I can do this, get the top hand. For some reason. Don't ask me why. But that's what I get the feel I get from it. But I can do that. That's all I got to say. <laughs> get in the batter's box. One two coming from Rogers and that's on the outside corner got him looking at a fastball and Pete has struck out for the second time today. Rogers has retired eight in a row one nothing Mets after throw the SNY app now fourth inning Jacob Stallings leads off against David Peterson and he takes a slider for a strike. Stallings had a base hit to left field his first time up. Peterson's allowed the leadoff hitter to reach in every inning. He could use himself an easy one and after 53 pitches in the first three. Change up fouled off and it's 0 and 2. David Peterson, the 20th overall pick in the 2017 draft. His counterpart today, Trevor Rogers, was taken with the 13th pick in the same draft. Peterson coming out of the University of Oregon. Rogers coming out of high school. And Stallings fouls back a high fastball. Stallings, then Gerard Encarnacion and Brian De La Cruz against Peterson. Mm, that was the old at Shea Stadium, the old uh, neon signs to the left there with the pitcher in between the P and Peterson and the three. Well, they were. Neon signs on the outside of Shea at one point. Of course, the original were the speckles, the blue and right. orange speckles on I, the outside. I always tried to uh, uh, wonder what it symbolized, and then I always felt it was like confetti. That's what it looked like to me. Yeah. Metal, there were metal pieces attached to the outside. 
and felt like confetti. Oh, those are the old ones there. And the commemorating place that we call home for so many years. Curveball misses to Stallings, and it's one and two. City Field, which opened in 2009. This is a live shot. There are a lot of people outside still waiting to come in. I don't understand. It's the fourth inning. Really? You know, you know, I've been to more than a few Super Bowls. You know what that reminds me of? Oh, good pitch inside again. Get that fastball in. Five strikeouts for Peterson. So for the first time, Peterson retires the leadoff hitter. Your All-State Mayhem moment. Well, you know about Gerard Encarnacion's Grand Slam, but do you remember this? This was his outfield assist, throwing out Tomas Nita. Got a good, generous bounce there off the wall, but look at the gun. Right on target. With a tag by Rojas as well. So that reminds me, when the 49ers, their first Super Bowl, when they beat the uh, the Bengals, Montana's first Super Bowl, they went up to Detroit to play, and it was so cold and snow that it was so crowded with cars. People parked on the interstate, just pulled off the road on the interstate. People were climbing over the cyclone fences. Uh, it was a disaster. Slowly hit, tough play for Escobar. He'll glove it and fire it, and he got it. Beautiful play by Escobar, who has been sorely tested early in this game. And that's the second out. Well, Eduardo plays at a very nice third base. Has all year. But getting back to that story. Um, I got there early. The first quarter, the stadium was half empty. Half the stadium missed the first quarter. Couldn't get in the ball. Couldn't get in the stadium. Well, I don't think today it was a matter of a traffic jam because you know it's just a normal day. But I think a lot of folks have just showed up a little late. They had other things to do, so they'll catch the middle and latter stages of the game. One and one to De La Cruz. It's okay. There's no, there's no right or wrong. Oh, you know, we get on Dodger fans all the time for arriving late and leaving early, but ultimately, you arrive at your leisure and leave at your leisure. Oh, well, Dodgers have an excuse. I mean, they get caught in that traffic during the week. All we ask is that you try and spend part of your day with us. You know what's funny about playing in Dodger <laughs> Stadium was that when you become a veteran. You don't look at the and all of a sudden all oh, the seventh inning. Oh, we got a full house. I'll be darned because you're just so used to it. But I never paid attention to Dodger Stadium. We go, oh, where, where are the people? And all of a sudden in the fifth inning, there'd be 52,000 people in the ballpark. They get there eventually on their own time. And the Cruz takes a change up, blowing away two and two. I always, you know, I always remember the, 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 the shot of. Kirk Gibson's home run selling out and the shot of the brake lights in the background. Oh, yes. people leaving. Right. Like, what? Swing and a miss. He got him with a slider in the dirt. Peterson with a 1 2 3 inning for his sixth strikeout. Often, you know, Keith, Gary, you guys were talking about Pete Alonso's axe handle bat in the third inning. Well, Mark Canna also using an axe handle bat, one of the few guys on this team that does so. And, Keith, I know you said that. When you used it, for some reason, you felt like you could just get your, your top hand working a little bit more. For Canna, he's been using it for, since 2018, and he said really the, the only difference for him is that it's just it's comfortable. It's a more ergonomic feel in his hand, and he used to get calluses on the heel mm -hmm. of his hand with the knobs. That has gone away since he switched to the axe handle bat. Interesting. And, and you see how he's holding it, Keith? Not the way you were holding it, but he's got the, the, um, the fleshy part of his hand on the, the, right. wi the wider part. I can tell you uh, about that the calluses that you get on your hand from the normal knob because I used to get them and um, you'd have to get it would form like a, a ridge right because you're holding the bat and it would form a ridge right here like this and it would become like a little 
mountain almost, like a, a ridge line. And yeah, I, had, I would get a scalpel and very carefully flatten it out. Didn't want to get too close to this. I'm sorry, you got a scalpel? Yes. I used to, uh, when I get my, um, uh, we've got to pay attention to the game. Anna here. strikes out to start the fourth. Uh, you performed surgery on your own callus? Yes, I used to get them on, on, on my, you know, in my, uh, on my uh, fingers, too. And uh, you would get a scalpel, and you would just shave them down very carefully. I would bet that any hitter in today's game that has that issue, and maybe they don't because most of them wear batting gloves, they would have somebody else do that for them. As oh. opposed to taking a scalpel and shaving their own hand with a with a surgical instrument. Well, that, they always felt the trainers. Only two trainers when I played. You know, they were busy. A much bigger staff now. They've probably got an, you know, an assistant athletic trainer in charge of shaving calluses. J.D. Davis struck out his first time up. I'm cringing just thinking about this. Well, I, I, I mean, what if what if the knife slipped? No, 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 no. Be very careful. You've got a scalp. You've got a scalp on your hand. <laughs> That's exactly what would happen. <laughs> we, we'd get one of those. What was that photo we had of you? A cartoon with you uh, in, tra in traction? <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, get the big bandage on the hand. Two balls and a strike to Davis. By the way, speaking of uh, injuries, I was at least somewhat encouraged to see that Manny Machado did not break his ankle yesterday. Oh, man. He split off first base. That was ugly. It is sprained. That's a severe sprain, too. So the Padres already without their, uh, their best player in Tatis, and now their other great player in Machado. And who knows how long he's going to be out. That's your drive around the majors presented by your tri state Audi dealers. And they also fell out of first place again, didn't they not? Yes, they did. Half game behind the Dodgers. And all they're doing is throwing fastballs to JD upstairs. You know, the Dodgers are struggling right now, too. They lost to the Guardians yesterday again, and the Giants have been the ones who've been able to take advantage. The Giants are only three games out. Right. And Mr. Betts went on the IL, right? Yeah, broken rib. That's inside ball four. So he threw him fast balls, but he missed. And that snaps a string of nine in a row, retired by Rogers, his second walk. Well, last year, as a rookie, Trevor Rogers made the All Star team. One of six Marlins in history who made the All Star team as rookies. Dan Ugla. Wow. So the Mets have a one out base runner is Jeff McNeil, who lined out to left to end the first with the bases loaded. And the Marlins are shifting against him, which is really confusing, particularly when there's a left hand pitcher on the mound. They're trying to get Birdie over as far as they can. But if he gets any further to the left, to his left, then all that McNeil has to do is just drop a bunt down that line. They can do it right now. I'm trying to steer one to the left, and he fouls it off one and one. Jeff is having himself a fabulous year. It goes under the radar a little bit, I think, because of the year that Alonzo's having. And Jeff is fourth in the National League in batting, sixth in on base percentage, driving in runs, hitting over 400 with runners in scoring position, playing two different positions and sometimes three extremely yep. well. Just having a really great year. Should be an all star year the way he's going. And all of a sudden, Rodgers is missing outside in the corner. I'm glad that Jeff has come to terms uh, with. Not hitting the home run. He's only got four home runs. And taking pride in his batting average. And he should. Don't let them talk you out of it. That a batting average means nothing. It does. And he takes one right through the vacated space in the left center field. 
Davis will go first oh. to third, and they throw to third for some peculiar reason, and that enables McNeil to take second. We'll give him credit for a double, but that's a mistake by Luke Williams. He has to throw that ball to second base. You think they're going to give him a double? They just did. Well, I just don't understand how, how can they keep shifting like this? It's just an invitation. He's hitting over 400 when they shift against him because of this. He's got such great bat control. He's able to take advantage of that wide open space. And he takes pride in it. Well, he's got good bat control, good knowledge of the strike zone. Infield in. It's Escobar at the plate. Trying to snap an 0 for 22. Struck out looking his first time up. That's really a bad mistake there by Williams. Really put his pitcher in a tough spot now. Put his team in a tough spot. Should have at least kept the double play alive. McNeil never broke strike because he saw the ball get thrown to third base, but nonetheless, throw's got to go to second. Breaking ball here out to left center field. Not very deep. Coming in Williams, and JD's going to try it. Williams throw to the plate. The slide, he saves. The ball trickles away. Backed up by Rogers. A short sacrifice fly for JD for uh, Eduardo Escobar to drive in JD Davis to make it 2 0 New York. Well, if you have a real strong arm out there in the outfit, you got to hold them up. But Marlins contended that McNeil left second too early, but he was called safe. Where's the cutoff throw? And that ball, there's no cutoff man. That's why McNeil went to third. He just got in. Gave him the left hand, took it away, got the right hand across the plate. Stallings unable to hold the ball anyway. Ball came up and hit JD in the face after Stallings let it go. So Escobar drives in his 26th run, makes it 2 0 New York. Now McNeil at third with two out for Nito. Tomas mm. chases one, nothing in one. Good change. This kid's going to be okay, Rogers. He's having a tough year, but he's got good stuff. He's going to pull out of this. He's going to be around a while if he stays healthy. You shouldn't call him a kid. He's a young man. He's 20, 24. He could be your grandson. That's true. You're right there. 24 I was having an inexplicably bad year 255 I wound up hitting. What year was that 1978. 79 was a good year. Well I came back yes. So maybe he'll do the same. Good oh block wow. by Stallings here comes McNeil and he walks in. Wow great base running by McNeil Stallings blocked it about 15 feet away Rogers didn't get there. And McNeil steals a run to make it three nothing. Rogers didn't get there to cover. McNeil that is just getting a good lead and wanting to score. I mean if the pitcher gets there he might be out. Rogers didn't get there. That's his mistake. Two mistakes by the Marlins cost him two runs. But you know the other piece of that it's also understanding the situation it's two out it's two strikes on your number nine hitter you're probably not going to score in the inning unless you steal that run which is exactly what McNeil did he should always anytime any base always be ready on anything to break and get the extra base think about McNeil's trip around the bases. He was aware of Williams throwing to the wrong base, got to second. Right. He tagged up on the fly ball, he got to third. Yep. Short, wild pitch, he comes home to score. And there's no relay man, so there's three mistakes by the Marlins defensively. 
Slow ground ball. Birdie has to charge and throws out Nito to end the inning. But the Mets scarf a couple of runs with only one hit and lead three nothing after four at City Field. A nice trip around the bases. He's out of the game. Meanwhile, David Peterson now stake to a three nothing lead. We'll get nine one and two in the Marlins batting order in the fifth. Luke Williams leads off and he takes low and in for ball one. Williams struck out his first time up. Peterson had his first one two three inning in the fourth. He's fanned six over the first four innings to match a season high. And he pours a fastball over the inside corner one and one. Let's see if we can see anything with McNeil here. I didn't see anything, did you? Keep it going here after he scored. Let me see him. Yep, a little. Exhale. A little left. Yeah. But there was something going on. So I don't know if something got tweaked on the way home. Catcher's mid on the warning track. Oh, that's very nice. Marcana returning the glove to the kid who dropped it. Never lose your equipment, young man. It's not easy to catch a foul ball with a catcher's mitt, I will say. <laughs> but you got to go with what you got. Williams drives one to center. Nimmo hustles in, and he can't get it. Oh. Has to play it on the hop. Nice play on the hop, too. That could have got by him. Nimmo froze on contact, but that ball was hit off the end of the bat, and Williams wound up dumping it in front of him. I mean, this was danger, danger. Nicely done, Brandon. That's those full swings, and you can't really tell if it's all. You think it's off the meat of the bat, and you just that split second, you you freeze, and it's too late. It's a bloop. So that's the fifth hit against Peterson, and the Marlins have the leadoff man on for the fourth time in five innings. Now the irrepressible John Birdie is <laughs> one for two today. Williams at first he can steal a base. Here's McNeil again coming home. Left of your screen. There was one step there with about 20 feet to home plate where there was a little hitch. I don't know if that's where it happened. Came into the dugout and he went right down the tunnel and into the clubhouse to get attention. Yeah, you can see him limping a little bit there. So we'll wait and see. Well, Peterson's already picked off a runner today with that snap move. He got Birdie in the first time. Birdie takes a fastball upstairs for ball one. Peterson doing everything he can to control the running game. He's got that pickoff move. He's shown a good slide step today. And Birdie stopped the swing 2 0. This is a Marlins team that likes to run. They're tied for first. In the National League and stolen bases, led by Birdie and Chisholm. Now we've got Williams, who has good speed, stole a base earlier in this series. That stole it with two out in the ninth. Change up outside, and now Peterson behind on Birdie, three and zero. Oh. Nice souvenir. <laughs> Dipsy do. <laughs> There's a strike. Peterson off to a terrific start today. He's not gone deep in games very often, but this might be a day when he's asked to. Remember, the Mets are planned to pitch Trevor Williams Tuesday, that's tomorrow, in Houston, so that takes away one of the long men out of their bullpen. And also keep in mind that the Mets, like every team, have to get down to 13 pitchers today. Seth Lugo went on the paternity list 
And Dom Smith rejoining the team. So Williams making the start tomorrow in Houston. Carlos Carrasco on Wednesday. In the City Probables. There's a chance that by the time that turn comes up again, it could be Max Scherzer. Scherzer is going to make a rehab start tomorrow for Binghamton. And if all goes well, there's a chance he might need only the one rehab start and then be able to return as soon as even Sunday in Miami. We'll see. Williams at first, nobody out. Three and two to Birdie. Not going. And Birdie strikes out. Good slider by Peterson who comes back from 3 and 0 to strike out Birdie. That's a season high 7 strikeouts for David Peterson. Okay, we're going to we're going to show you the sacrifice fly again and the advancement of both runners, the back runner McNeil. Watch the first baseman to the right of your screen. Now the shortstop is kind of doing nothing here too. He could be a cutoff man. Look at the first baseman. Where's the cutoff man? If there's a cutoff man there, McNeil cannot advance. And if McNeil can't advance, he's not in the clubhouse with a with a boo boo or a run. Make yourself useful out there. We say it all the time. There's no play in baseball for which a position's assignment is standing around and watching. Right. Um, to me, the one I remember most is the playoff game in Oakland with Jeter down the first baseline. He no business being there. Shortstop coming across to the first baseline. That to me is one of the finest plays I ever saw. Defensively. But you're right about the first baseman. I mean, once the ball is caught in left field, there's nothing for the first baseman to do the, except to help out by coming across the diamond to, to be a cutoff man. Ex precisely. And the three mistakes by the Marlins. You got the left fielder thrown to the wrong bag, setting up a second and third. Pitcher not covering home on a wild pitch, and no cutoff man. Two runs. Thank you very much. Giff wrapped it. Chisholm takes a fastball for a strike. Jazz was retired on the ground down in the first. He was hit by a pitch in the third. Williams at first. He hasn't moved. Chisholm fouls oh. off the slider and it's two and two. Jeez. Chisholm loves to take a full swing and come across the plate. That was um, really dramatic right there. That that swing. Well, it certainly produced more power this year. Last year, Chisholm hit 18 home runs for the full season. He's got 13 already this year. Jorge Soler on deck. 2 2 from Peterson. Just off the corner. 3 and 2. Peterson's done a very good job holding the runners on in this game. This is a team that steals bases. I think they've stolen eight bases in this series, the Marlins. And he has thrown over enough and snap throat to keep them anchored on first. Williams is a threat to steal. He's got good speed. 3 and 2, one out. Not going. And Chisholm takes ball four. So there's the first walk of the day for Peterson. And Solaire, with his power, comes up as the tying run. Chisholm loves doing that little bat flip on the walk, doesn't he? He likes to do a lot of things up there. So here's Soler who had an infield hit in the first struck out in the third one for two. Peterson's already stranded five runners in this game Miami 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. And Soler takes it back to a slider that he doesn't get the call. One and oh. Could have easily been called a strike by Alan Porter. Oh look at that. With sprinkles it's already starting to melt. You got to eat it fast, otherwise it'll be all over the place. Wait till August. I mean, it's yeah, you're right. It's not particularly <laughs> hot today. 
Temperature in the 70s. Wait till it's in the 90s. They really overstuff those uh, those ice cream helmets, don't they? Come on, come on, come on, eat it fast. <laughs> That's going to be all over his shirt soon. <laughs> two and zero to Soler, and he pulls one down to third. A chance for two. Escobar to Guillaume on the first double play. Side retired. Just what the doctor ordered for David Peterson. Five four three. He's got five scoreless. Three nothing New York. Of more games coming up with the Marlins. Three next weekend in Miami, and then another series coming up shortly after that. Brandon Nimmo fouls off the first pitch breaking ball from Trevor Rogers as we start at the bottom of the fifth. Nimmo doubled and scored a run in the first to a comebacker in the second. This will be heading out of division for a couple of games out of league as they head to Houston for a two game series starting tomorrow night. That's drilled into right field a base hit for Nimmo. He's got his second hit of the day. <laughs> A leadoff single in the bottom of the fifth. Hanging slider stays right in. That's just the Mets' fourth hit against Rogers, and Nemo has half of them. And now he's aboard for starting Marte, who's reached on an error and struck out 0 for 2. Yes. Fastball low and in ball one. The Astros are flying high in the American League West. They're the only team with a winning record in that division. They have a nine and a half game lead over the Angels. So the Mets will have a firm test on their hands coming up the next two days. It's a quick visit night game day game and the Mets miss the best starters for the Astros Verlander pitched yesterday he didn't pitch well but he's had a, an unbelievable year bouncing back from Tommy John surgery at age 39 and Framber Valdez is their other best starter another division with only one team over 500 and that's the team on top. The Angels might be on top if they got to play Seattle every day. Yes. <laughs> that a I mean, Mike Trout in a five game series in Seattle hit five home runs. Four of them were game winning RBI home runs. Mm. That had never been done in a series in Major League history. That one player hit four game winning home runs in the same series. And Trout has now hit 33 in Seattle. 52 overall against the Mariners and he's only halfway through his career. Yep. I mean think about Willie Stargell with 60 against the Mets the most ever against the Mets and Trout's already got 52 against Seattle. Double glass. Flip downs. <laughs> well not exactly. <laughs> Marte pops one foul. Cooper coming over, hoping for a play, but that'll go beyond his reach. Opening game of the series in Houston tomorrow night. 8-10 first pitch New York time. Coverage begins at 7:30. Trevor Williams against Jose Urquidy. Don't know about the status of Jordan Alvarez. He was um, taken out of the game on Saturday. He hurt his hand. On a swing, they thought he might have a broken hamate bone, but they determined, at least for the moment, that he does not. Obviously, Alvarez's presence in the lineup is enormous for Houston. He's having an MVP type season with a 1,026 OPS, hitting 311 with 18 home runs. But they certainly have plenty of other bats Bregman and Altuve and Guriel and Brantley. Yep. They were a powerhouse team. Second in the American League in home runs, and their pitching is second in the American League in ERA. That's line into center field, a base hit for Marte. Nimmo to second. He'll take a turn and hold there as De La Cruz fires it in. 
So back to back base hits for Nimmo and Marte to start the bottom of the fifth. Marte likes that ball bell tied down. This is right down the middle and covers it. Too many balls in the middle of the plate has been a problem for Rodgers. Now the Mets with a chance to add to their three nothing lead with Lindor. He had one ball hard. And Chisholm made a nice play on it. He had one ball soft and he got a hit. And slider to start him off, had him off balance, nothing and one. Oh, the ball out in the field, left center. Beach ball. By the eye and Verizon. And there's another. That'll give the Marlins a chance to get their bullpen cooking. Dylan Floro is up. David Peterson has been able to work out of jam after jam today. Terrific performance so far. Waiting to see if the Mets can score some more for him. Mm. Another good breaking ball by Rodgers to get ahead on Lindor. Mets have been uh, defensively have turned a lot of double plays. And it, Fiorme can really turn it at second base. He's got such quick hands. And there's another balloon out on the field. Rogers just pointed to it. And so De La Cruz is going to have to do some more housekeeping. I think it might be the same one. Step on it. Yeah, really. It is time to deflate the balloon. Just step. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I think it was a popular yes. choice. You you lose your balloon, it gets popped. You don't get it back. Check my defensive card in my hat. Don't worry about the balloon anymore. And Lindora hits one right at De La Cruz. Now he gives some ground and he's there to make the catch. Nimmo tags. He heads to third and he'll make it safely. Lindor hit that ball on the nose and it serves to advance Nimmo to third. Where Alonso will try to drive him home with one out. Good base running by Brandon. Hang on to that slugger. You know what happens to somebody who loses their balloon twice? We've already seen. Don't fill it up with water. Pete's had a rough time against Rogers so far. 0 for 2 today. Now 0 for 12 in his career against this left-hander. The bananas are here. Don't forget, there's always money in the in the banana stand. Playing back for two. Right side of the infield wide open for Pete. And he lays off the first pitch change up ball one. Alonzo started the day leading the National League in home runs leading the major leagues in RBIs. And he's got an RBI chance here with first and third and one out. Back foot slider just missed, and it's two and out. That was not an easy pitch to lay off. Also, could have been a strike. Could have been a strike. I mean, a real nasty location.
2 0 to Alonzo. And he drills one to left field. Back goes Williams to the warning track to make the catch. Tagging at third is Nemo. He'll come in to score. Alonzo drives on a run with a sacrifice fly. His 64th run batted into the season, and it's 4 0 New York. Boy, every time Pete hits one, you think it has a chance to get out. That must have got in on him a little bit. Change up. Uh, a little on the label. On top of the plate. It had to get in on the label a little bit. Not enough to get the run in. Second inning in a row with a sacrifice fly for New York. Mets already have more sacrifice flies this year than they had all of last year. And they're playing just their 69th game. I think Pete's going to. Love going to Houston and looking at that left field fence <laughs> in Houston. Is it still called uh, Minute Maid? It is called Minute Maid, okay. which was not its original name. Okay. It had a scandal ridden name. Right, okay, of course. <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. But the uh, the oranges are still in the. Uh, they're not pumpkins? I thought they were pumpkins. Well, they're large oranges, which, you know, can sometimes resemble. A different fruit. I love that ballpark, by the way. The roof will be closed. I can guarantee you that. It's supposed to be 100 degrees every day in Houston. Here's Canna with two out, and a snap throw, and Marte is back. The last time we were in Houston was that right after the hurricane, right after Hurricane Harvey. Oh, yes, it was. That was, that was also the weekend that the Astros acquired Verlander, looked just seconds before the deadline. Right. Right at the end of August. So, are you suggesting when you said that Pete's going to love going to Houston that the ball that he just hit would have been off the wall in left field in Houston? I'm not so sure that one would have, but it's going to be a very enticing left field for him, and I hope he doesn't go in there and try to pull. Get intoxicated and seduced by that, mm. by that wall. Ball flies out to right also, in that ballpark. Sure does. It's a good bar park to hit in. That right center field gap, it, it jumps. We've seen some great games there over the years. None better than that 17 mm. inning game right before the All Star break. Was that the game the guy was trying to get my attention in front of me? I don't remember that, but I remember it was the one that uh, Beltron climbed the hill in center yes. field in extra inning, saved yeah. the game. That was one of the greatest catches I've ever seen. And I also remember about that game that Billy Wagner warmed up like eight separate times before he finally got brought in in a save situation. Who was managing then? It would have been Jerry Manuel, I think. Could have been Terry. I think no, I think it was Jerry. Was Jerry. No. Rogers up over 90 pitches now. One and two to count it, trying to put this inning to bed. And this is low two and two. Canna drew a bases loaded walk in the first inning that forced in the first run of the game. And then he struck out in the fourth. J.D. Davis would be next. It's have made the most of their five hits today, scoring four runs on those five hits. Marte at first with two down. He's running, and Canna strikes out on the fastball to end the inning. But the Mets squeeze out another run on the Alonzo sacrifice fly and lead it four nothing after five. Cooper has struck out and lined out 0 for 2. Peterson at 87 pitches through five innings. Boy, he's had a good slider all day. Good command. That's it. The hey. balloon police have entered the scene. No more balloons in a spot where they might go on the field. It's been enough of that today. There'll be no more of it. You sound like Ray Walsh. No? <laughs> In uh, fast times, <laughs> yes, fast times at Ridgemont High. Oh gosh, he was perfect for that role. 
Just having some food and learning about Cuba, Mr. Ham. <laughs> oh, and two to Cooper. And it's bounced over the mound. Lindor behind the bag is there to grab it and throws out Cooper one away. Season high seven strikeouts for David Peterson today. There's a slider right there. There's a, there's the dark fastball inside caught looking slider. Slidey. Fastball in. Slidey. Slidey. How about that NFL films music behind the strikeouts. It's outstanding. I feel like we're matriculating down the field. Working that ball inside to right handers. His slider's been real effective. And what you don't see, you only see the the uh, the end of it, the, the pitch, the final pitch, but what the pitches prior that set it up the are balloon, critical as well. The balloon cleanup continues. One and one to Miguel Rojas. Peterson's longest outing of the year was six innings against the Giants. He threw 99 pitches in that game. He's up to 92 now. Rojas has one of the five hits for the Marlins today, and there's a good changeup by Peterson to get ahead one and two. That's bullpen is cranking for the first time. With Peterson trying to get through the sixth inning for the second time this year. Adam Montavino, first man up. If you missed the news earlier, Seth Lugo placed on the paternity list today. That's lined the other way toward the right field line. Foul. And so the Mets, like every other team, down to 13 pitchers. That's the new rule. And it was supposed to be implemented two years ago, but it was delayed first by the pandemic and then by the lockout this year and now finally it went into effect today the teams with their 26 man rosters can have a maximum of 13 pitchers. I like that rule because then you can have every uh, Tom Dick and Harry up there in the bullpen. Well it means every team has at least four bench players too which I think makes it more interesting. Grounded toward the hole that's going to sneak through for a base hit for Rojas his second head of the game. And the Marlins have a one out base runner. Let's check in with the studio. Gary Apple has a game break brought to you by your local Honda dealers. Gary. True, Gary, and it's notable because the last 29 games the Braves have played have all been against teams who were under 500 at the time. They've gone 21 and 8 in those 29 games, including that 14-game winning streak. No, well, the Mets have had their uh, share of playing those cellar dwellers themselves early, and but it all evens out in the end, Gary. Yep. Well, not quite. Because the Mets do have to play four games with the Yankees and the Braves that, do not. Yes. Jacob Stallings is one for two today. Braves play their four rivalry games against the Red Sox, which can be tough, but obviously the Yankees have the best record in baseball this year. So it's the Atlanta Braves against the old, uh, well, it wouldn't be the Boston Braves. The Boston Braves were National League. Right. Then they named Boston Braves moved to Milwaukee, correct? And they do Atlanta. Right. So it's like they're playing themselves. That's a good slider by Peterson. Two balls and a strike to Stallings. I believe Warren Spawn was a Boston Brave, correct? Yes. He was. But not Hank Aaron. No. He arrived, I think it was the first year in Milwaukee. 53 or 54. What about Eddie Matthews? I'm not, not sure. Matthews, I think, might have been in Boston. Not sure. They moved to Milwaukee in '53, right? And then to Atlanta in '66. So they moved the year I was born. Isn't that old? It's hard to believe. You're so well preserved. Well, you know, it would have been April. I wouldn't have been born. I would have been <laughs> incubated. Still in the oven. Not quite cooked. 
Three one to Stallings and that's inside ball four so Peterson issues his second walk of the day and that's going to be the last pitch he throws. It's too bad too because he just missed with that pitch. I and he's a little surprised. He wants to stay in. You can he tell. He might have been coming out anyway against Encarnacion after his heroics yesterday. So instead, it'll be Adovino brought in to face the rookie. Terrific effort by David Peterson. He leaves after five and a third scoreless. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Nissan. Shop NissanUSA.com. Good call. Guy with power. There's Adovino. He pitched in the first game of this series, went one and a third, three strikeouts, no runs. Pitch. Yeah. That is always his first pitch, a slider that's mm. nowhere close to the strike zone. It's funny, isn't it? And we talked about the uh, the Yankee reliever for the, the bridge to uh, Jeff, Rivera, Rivera, Jeff Rivera. Nelson. Jeff Nelson. It was very similar. I ran into Jeff. Jeff lives down in Florida, and I ran into him, and we had a, a brew ha ha together. And um, uh, he always said he came in, and he said I never threw a first pitch fastball. When I came in out cold out of that bullpen, my first pitch was always a slider. I didn't want a first ball fastball. I got burned too many times early in my career. So I guess Adovino takes his cue from uh, Jeff. There goes the runner from second, and no throw by Nito. Big jump for Rojas, as Adovino paid him no mind, and Rojas steals his third base of the year. Stallings did not follow him, and wisely, Stallings did not follow him. Doesn't run well enough. Peterson five and a third six hits two walks seven strikeouts a hit batsman 100 pitches and out of Vino got the last four outs of the Mets win on Friday looking for the double play ball from Encarnacion who's hit the ball on the ground twice today 0 for 2 and he misses badly with that slider and it's three and one Brian De La Cruz on deck. It's the third appearance for Ottavino in this homestand. He has not given up a run in both appearances. Grounded down to third, a chance for two. Guillaume with a turn, side retire. Second straight inning that the Mets have gone around the horn. That preserves the scoreless. Mets looking to take three out of four from the Marlins. They've got a four nothing lead as they come to bat in the sixth. And veteran right hander Dylan Floro is in to pitch. Second appearance in this series. J.D. Davis leads off against him and takes a slider in the dirt. He came in the second game of this series and pitched a scoreless inning. He's got good stuff. He's having a rough go at it right now. Just coming off injury. Missed the first six weeks of the season. What? Davis, Giorme, and Escobar for the Mets in the sixth. Trevor Rogers threw 93 pitches over five innings, five hits, four runs, three earned, two walks, seven strikeouts, a wild pitch. David Peterson was better. Peterson wound up with five and a third scoreless innings. And uh, the Mets have to be very encouraged with yes. what David did today. David has to be very encouraged. He's had some difficulties in starts, but this was a very good one. Had good slide ball today. Next stop, perhaps, for David the delivery room. The stork. Let's see, you got Lugo who just left on paternity leave. You got McNeil who could be heading any day, and Peterson as well. For Peterson and McNeil, it's their first time around. All those kids are going to be Geminis. They're going to be twins. They're, they can be difficult, those Geminis. I don't believe they're going to be Geminis. No? No. It's a little getting late. It's the 20th already. Well, let me check. I think Gemini ends 
like tomorrow. Swing and a miss, and Davis is down on strikes. Your Spectrum Mobile High Speed Hitting today. Artisan Ball of the Day was a line drive out from Lindor in the fifth inning. Luis Guillorme will bat for the first time. Guillorme took over for Jeff McNeil after McNeil scored a run on a wild pitch and went down the tunnel. Gary, you are right. Today is the last day, so it's make or break, but they're born today. They're on the cusp. What's uh, what are they on the cusp of? Was it cancer come after Gemini? Um there's all oh. there's your one person Gemini. <laughs> Got to have somebody to talk to until the next siblings born. That is just incredibly cute. <laughs> Take it outside and it's two and out of your mm -hmm. Still working on your uh, your zodiac. Your, well, your ephemeris. Well, I just the ruling planet is Mercury, and the ruling house <laughs> is the third house. <laughs> When the moon is in the seventh house. <laughs> the Army played second base yesterday, went one for three and drove in a run. And he fouls off the changeup from Floro, and it's two and one. Good call, Garrett. Cancer's the next one up. Cancer starts tomorrow. And so does summer, right? Tomorrow, the first day of summer? Um. Solstice? Longest day of the year, June 21st. And we'll be in Houston. The longest day of the year, and it's going to be 100 degrees. At least. But we'll be indoors for the game. And humid. Yeah, I love that. Two and one to Guillaume. Oh, he fouls off the fastball. Two and two. Even with the Braves winning yesterday and the Mets losing, the Mets with a five and a half game lead. It's the 42nd day this year that the Mets have led by at least five and a half games. That exceeds their total number of days leading by that much for the last 14 years combined. So don't look a gift to us in the mouth. This has been an extraordinary season already for this team. It certainly has. 42 days they've had at least a five and a half game lead. It has been refreshing, a wondrous, wonderful to watch. Last time the Mets had that many days with that big a lead, you got to go back to 2006. That's hit hard and under the glove of Cooper into right field, a base hit for Guillaume. It was a shot. Cooper took a chance at it, but the ball was by him. And Guillaume with a good turn at bat in his first at bat of the day. No, oh, Guillaume just content. Oh boy, got under his glove. He was there. See how that's going to rank on the hardest hit balls of the day. So one out and one on. That's how their sixth hit. That was 104. So it's right, right up there on the list. Here's Escobar with a sacrifice fly to drive and run his last time up. Still trying to snap that 0 for 22. And he pops this one up. Birdie waiting for it to come down. Called off by Rojas. And Rojas makes the play two out. SNY wants to send you on a trip to Universal Orlando Resort where you'll experience the action, thrills, and adventure of three incredible theme parks, plus stay at Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort. SNY's Fan Flyaway Sweepstakes presented by M&M's. Go to SNY.tv slash Fan Flyaway and enter today. So you were asking before about Eddie Matthews and whether he played in Boston. No. Not only did Eddie Matthews play in Boston, but he was the only player who played for the Braves in Boston, Milwaukee, and Atlanta. And Atlanta. Because Spawn never Spawn quite Spawn never got there. Yeah. Or Burdett. It was Nito. And he drives one out to right field. Encarnacion got turned around, but he finds it. 
And he makes the catch. Side retired. A hit and one left. We go to the seventh at City Field, 4 0 New York. Grinder to end the sixth, stays on for the seventh to face Brian De La Cruz, who has struck out twice today, looking in the second, swinging in the fourth. David Peterson threw five and a third, no runs, six hits, two walks, seven strikeouts, a hit batsman. Peterson threw 100 pitches, a season high, and lowered his ERA to 3.18. And uh, the Mets have gotten exactly what they've needed out of their depth starting pitching this year from McGill from Peterson from Trevor Williams who gets the start tomorrow biding their time until they get their two aces back. And one of those aces is firmly on the short horizon. And the Scherzer are set to make a rehab start tomorrow for Binghamton and perhaps back five days after that. Champing. Champing, Champing. a bit. Indeed, no chomping. <clears throat> Luke Williams on deck and then John Birdie for the Marlins in the seventh. And De La Cruz flies one out to right. Marte had him played perfectly over toward the line. One out. Here's an interesting stat. You know how we talk all the time about first pitch strikes being important. Today, David Peterson faced 24 batters, and in those 24 batters, he threw seven first pitch strikes. Nice. What Tom Seaver? Not, not the formula that you generally try for, but it worked for him today. He was behind on the count a lot, and yet. Survive. Oh, seven. Seven of 24. That's not good. Not nice. Yes. Anthony so, Bass up in the Miami bullpen. You're, don't confuse me. I was trying to be as explicit as I could. Next time, pay better attention. <laughs> <laughs> Williams takes a strike on the outside corner, one and one. Williams dunked a base hit in front of Nimmo in center field in the fifth inning. His first hit in this series and eight at bats. Each team with six base hits, but the Mets have made the most of theirs. And the Marlins most definitively have not. The Marlins have left seven runners on base in the first six innings, hit into two double plays, gone 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. And that's how Peterson was able to survive only seven first pitch strikes and nine base runners. And Williams takes a slider for strike three call. So Ottavino has his first strikeout. Ottavino, nobody on. Ottavino has been solid. I thought that was a terrific pickup. It was a late pickup, if I'm correct, right, Gary? Yes. And I thought it was a, just a splendid addition to the bullpen. Well, with Trevor May still trying to make his way back. Lugo away right now for paternity leave, and Lugo's been a little up and down this year. Ottavino has become an enormously important piece. As Birdie flies one foul off the right side, and that'll go out of play. And Drew uh, Smith has improved enormously and has moved himself up the food chain. He's been solid. I mean, Drew has become the primary setup guy now for, for Edwin Diaz. It looked as though Colin Holderman was moving up that food chain before he went on the IL. So the Mets are a little short in the bullpen right now, and that makes Ottavino's presence that much more important. Birdie takes a slider off the plate, and it's one and one. I would expect, as we move closer to the trade deadline, which is still more than a month away, the Mets are certainly going to be in the market for some relief help. Though, if they're ever fully healthy in their starting rotation, and who knows, you know, these things are so ephemeral. You get one guy back, you lose another guy. But if they ever had, ev had everybody available, yes. think about what a weapon Tyler or McGill would be out of the bullpen. I'm sure Tyler wants to start, wouldn't be happy with that. Well, I mean, Seth Lugo wants to start too, but it's the way those things go. But if you have DeGrom and Scherzer, to go oh well. Rasco and Walker and 
Um, Bassett, I mean, it's a no brainer, right? Yes. 2 2 coming. Struck him out. Back to back strikeouts for Adam Adovino to finish off the top of the seventh. Adovino gets five outs in a hurry. Stretch time at City Field, 4 0. Top of the Mets batting order. Brandon Nimmo already has a single and a double today, and he scored two of the Mets' four runs. And he takes the first pitch slider for a strike from Bass, nothing and one. Bass having a very good year. He pitched pretty well last year. He was in 70 games with the Marlins. He thought about using him as a closer, but that didn't really work out. He's found his niche as more of a setup guy. It's a good splitter, and he gets ahead on Nimmo, nothing and two. Trevor Rogers went the first five, gave up four runs, three earned on five hits. Dylan Floro, a scoreless sixth, and now Bass in the seventh, facing Nimmo, Marte, and Lindor. Let's head off to Houston when this game is over. Play two in Houston, and then we'll see the Marlins next weekend in Miami. Slider low and in, one and two. There is Drew Smith getting ready for the eighth inning, which has become his bailiwick. Shift on against Nimmo with two strikes. Slap the other way, and that'll go into left field for Nimmo's third hit of the day. You want to shift me? Okay. You shift me. I'll take it the other way. Good two strike hitting again that balls middle of the plate shade inside and just a little inside out you won't, like you said Gary you want to give me that little lane right there I'm bleeding an inning off I got I got the ball rolling this inning well it's going to be fascinating as this year goes along and the Mets keep playing baseball this way particularly with McNeil and Nemo. Guess you throw Giorme into that mix too. See if teams insist on continuing to shift against them, or if at some point they say enough. We'll well, play straight up and take our chance. The only team that made an in-series adjustment was the Mariners when they were here, and they won two out of three. Marte gets tied up, and he went around one and one. We'll say novice with the call at first. Marte had a base hit to center field his last time up, one for three on the day. Reached on an error in the first inning that set up the Mets' first unearned run. Mets then scored two in the fourth and a run in the fifth, scratching him out all the way. That's it slowly down to third. Birdie goes to second and he's just barely out. Boy, I tell you what, no time to waste. They're a good hustle by Nemo. Did he? Okay, I was wondering if he kind of slid, slid late. That is just good. You got to get the lead runner here. Good stretch by Chisholm as well, playing a first baseman. Well, five four four so eliminates Nemo. One out in Marte at first base. Door is one for three. Had a broken bat single in the first. He's had two shots since then. Both have been out. That's back to bat. Oh, what a hopper! And it eludes Rojas, and everybody's safe. Jeez. Bass had plenty of time to turn two, and he threw one into the dirt. Well, this has got to be 
Is this shift related? No. It shouldn't no, be. No, no, no. Rojas was right there. Oh, man. It's an E1 all the way. And it brings up Big Pete. And the bass pointed to his chest. He knew that was him. Just goosed the throw. And Marlins commit their second error of the game. First one led to a run in the first inning. And the Marlins came into this game as a team uh, tied for second with the least amount of errors. And in terms of defensive runs saved, they are 13th in the majors, so they've done pretty well defensively. But they've made some mistakes today, not just errors, but yep. throwing to the wrong base, not backing up. Not the, getting a cutoff position. What the errors show when you look at this defense, it doesn't show the mental errors. The team cannot be making errors and they could be knuckleheads out there. Well, let's not paint with such a broad brush. <laughs> you remember Knucklehead was the sidekick of uh, Jerry Mahoney on the Winchell Mahoney show? I don't know Paul that Winchell show. Had the, the dummy, Jerry Mahoney, and Knucklehead was his brother. No, I don't they didn't have that in San Francisco. No, maybe that's an East Coast. Hooray, thing. hurrah! It's Winchell Mahoney time. No. Well, you didn't have Captain Satellite. <laughs> no, <it> didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and two to Alonso. We had a sack fly his last time up, and it takes it high. The Mets today have scored their runs on a bases loaded walk, a wild pitch, and two sacrifice flies. It's been a very opportunistic day for the Mets offense. It's called pecking away. Little peck here, little peck there. And it brings down the tallest of, of uh, oak trees. Death by a thousand cuts. Yes. There's the road ahead. Two games in Houston, night game tomorrow, day game Wednesday, and then we scoot to Florida, take yep. Thursday off, weekend in Miami. And then back home to play the Astros and the Rangers next week. A lot of off days ahead for the Mets. Road ahead presented by your tri state Cadillac dealers. Three off days in the next week and a half. Pick up Ronnie in Miami, don't we? Chopper near the bag. Chisholm with the step and the throw for the double play, and that retires the side. 4 4 3 to end the inning. And we're going to stuff three in the booth in Miami. Won't be much elbow room. 4 0 Mets going to the A's. B for Reno. <laughs> okay. Drew Smith on to pitch <laughs> the eighth inning. Did that one get by you too? It did. The Seinfeld reference. Oh, I, well, I Kramer, know what? Kramer feeds the horse B for Reno and he, um, you know, starts having some problems at the other end. No. I, you know. Rusty was the name of the horse. Drew Smith got four outs on Saturday and a good changeup against Jazz Chisholm gets him ahead 0 2. Chisholm's been on base twice with a hit by pitch and a walk. Otherwise 0 for 1. Adam Montevino got five outs in relief of David Peterson. The result is seven scoreless innings, nine strikeouts for Met pitchers today. That's lined the other way. Canna coming on, and he picks it off for the out. Chisholm retired on the liner left, one down in the eighth. Canna corn. Uh, Very nice. Very nice. And it's your favorite brand. Delmonte. Nicely done. So you'll you'll be interested to know, Keith. That the original designer of the horse drawn carriage in Central Park was Joseph Handsome. Oh, that thus, makes, that that's makes why it. they call it the Handsome Cab. Yeah, but the Brits did too. The Brits called it a Handsome, didn't they? Right. Same design. Same design. Oh, I guess he put a patent on it. Okay. Joseph, Joseph went a long way. His family name has outlasted him. We learn something new every day. Yes, we do. And sometimes we just make it up. Jorge Soler pops one up on the right side. Alonzo waving everybody else away as if anybody would get in his way. And there are two out. Yes, 
So Drew Smith's come on to get the first two. By the way, I don't know if you noticed this today, but with all the strikeouts in this series for the Mets, let's say they had 11 in the first game, 15 mm -hmm. in the second game, 12 yesterday, nine more today. The Met pitching staff now leads the National League in strikeouts. Oh, I can add something to the handsome. He was a Brit. Okay. And originated in uh, Hinkley. Leicestershire. Uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. In Le England. Le 1834 patent. Leicestershire? Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so it was a British uh, carriage, I guess, or handsome. Here's Garrett Cooper, who's 0 for 3. We've got a medical report on Jeff McNeil. McNeil left the game with a tight right hamstring. Seemed to tweak it as he uh, scored the run on the wild pitch in the fourth inning and then left the game. So the worst thing for that. Cooper lines a base wow. hit. And the Marlins have a two out base runner. That's a pretty impressive uh, quickness inside there. Drew Smith throws hard. He turned on that fastball, hit a bullet. That's an eye opener. Let's say he hit 313. Yep. That ball was inside, and he turned on it. Jeff to get on an airplane now with a tight hamstring and then fly, but it's almost a four hour flight to Houston. That's not a, a, not a, a good thing. Well, we'll see whether they make the assessment of whether the would be better to leave him behind and make a move. I think he probably he'll make the trip. He'll probably but ice it, and uh, we'll probably maybe not. I'm like I, I, I'm not the manager, but he might sit tomorrow. We'll see. All depends on the severity. Correct. Because you don't want him to pull that. He's too valuable. Well, we've been down this road before with Jeff. You know where he's had some tightness and. Um, Last year he tried to play through it and then he hurt it worse and so they're careful with him. They were careful earlier this year when they had when he had what they characterized as tired legs and they gave him a couple of days off. Two and zero to Rojas who has two hits today and he takes a fastball for a strike. <coughs> one. Sorry. Is it funny? Ron just texted our our colleague. No, we don't need to share. Oh, was the text about Alonzo's bat? Yes. Yeah. I saw that. <laughs> Two and one to Rojas. <laughs> and it's in the third three of one. You know, Ron's very perceptive. Sharp. He picks up on things. He praises you too. <laughs> His fingers over the knob of the bat, and he fouls one back this way. Oh, nice crab right in, right in front of us. He had a glove. Kid with a McNeil jersey on. Oh, and he gave it to a little kid who dropped it. And the kid should go say thank you. Go, mom. Oh, that's good. Mom said to make sure you say thank you. Very good. That's very kind of you. That's lovely. Look at that smile. Huh. Three, two, coming. And he fouls another one back. Ross had a nice series, five hits and 13 at bats. Always seems to play well against the Mets. Really, the de facto captain of this Marlins team. Cooper gets set to run three and two two out and Rojas slaps one down to Alonzo who feels the short hop and makes the play to end the inning scoreless inning for Drew Smith that takes us to the bottom of the eighth with the Mets leading four nothing and of course he started his career in Houston before they had oranges in the ballpark 19 years old right when so he got it all, to the it all comes full circle. Was he playing at Colt Stadium, mosquito infested Colt Stadium yep. in Houston, playing for the Houston Colt 45s? Tommy they, Dan saw to pitch the bottom of the eighth. They had that uh, smoking gun across their 
their chest. Remember, it was that revolver, the Colt 45 revolver. Changed the name when they moved to the Astrodome in '65. They were the Mets expansion mates, the Houston Colt 45s, and you know Houston always finished ninth, and the Mets finished tenth. Right. And our um, aspiring astronaut heading for Houston. If you missed the conversation with Keith earlier, I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Pete said he always wanted to be a baseball player or an astronaut. Said, but he couldn't quite get through calculus, so he had to ditch the astronaut idea and concentrate on baseball. And while outer space is the less for it, we are all much the better for it. Can of pounds went into the ground. What is the progression? You got algebra the first year, then geometry, then advanced algebra, and then trig, trig, trig and then calculus. Yeah. Did you take all those? I did, and I got tripped up on calculus too. Yeah, I just couldn't, could not. On the airplane to Houston, could you explain it to me? No, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. But you know, here's the nice thing about it is that. That's mm. line over short and oh. a beautiful grab by Rojas. Time the leap just perfectly to pull down a base hit from Canna and turn it into an out. Boy, that was a bullet. And a big hang with him. The only solace is, well, I hit it hard. He did that. Beautiful play by Rojas. <laughs> Flipping the bat in disgust. One out. So these days on the charter flights, the Mets have a much bigger travel party than they used to. Oh, Part that's of the right. reason why the travel party is bigger yes. is because you've got more trainers and sports science people, but you also have a lot of analytics people who yes. are very math based. And might be able to help you out with calculus. They can talk about differentials and slope and all that stuff that I don't understand. Oh, oh that's another one. And JD gets drilled. Another one. Jeez. Oh, that hurts. JD, remember last year, suffered a left hand injury that really put a crimp in his season. How many is that? Appears to be his left hand again. Jeez. And you can see the frustration. Same that same hand. That troubled him so badly all of last year. How many now in the year, Gary? It's 50. It's an even 50. But this one, this one is especially painful for JD because of where it happened. And you got a three man bench. You got Mazika, a four now, if uh, Dom is here. I don't know if you folks have joined us late. Dom Smith has been recalled. Let's see where this got him exactly. It got him right on the on the knuckle, the, the, the pinky outside, knuckle. Yeah. That it, this, well, the, at least it didn't hit the wrist, but that hurts. You see the ball deflect. It hit him solid. Well, JD is going to stay in and run and we'll see what happens after that. He's playing, he's DHing today, so he doesn't have to go to the field at least. Right on the outside that hurts. of that left pinky. Mm. And that brings up uh, our favorite Louis. Yolan Lopez and Edwin Diaz both up in the bullpen. I guess if it stays four nothing, they go to Diaz. If they get some more runs, they bring in Lopez, or something like that. Do you bring in Lopez, and if he gets in trouble quickly, you bring in Diaz? You could do that because Edwin can get ready so quickly. Correct. Usually only requires about six or seven real hard throws in the bullpen to get himself prepared. 
I'm not so sure that. I mean, Diaz got a quick save, 23 pitches on the second game of this series. Yeah, it wasn't really quick. <laughs> he hasn't been overworked. Yeah, the quick one was against the the Brewers the last game. He, he mowed right. Well, no, he didn't. No, the last one was against Miami, the game where uh, they had the runner thrown out at the plate. Yes. That's right. That was the the big fisted double down the right field line. So we'll see what transpires here in the bottom of the eighth. Meanwhile, JD covering his right hand, but not the hand that got hit, interestingly enough. Yorme came in for McNeil after Jeff left with hamstring tightness, had a base hit in his only at bat. Three and zero to Guillermo. I mean, this was last year when JD got hit against the Phillies. Same spot. Mm. You're That's right. That left hand. Exact same spot. And it it really it put a crimp in his entire season. It really never felt right the whole year. Finally got it operated on and felt as though it was back where it was supposed to be. And now he gets it there again. And hopefully it will not be nearly as serious. <laughs> Three and one to Guillaume with Escobar on deck. And Guillaume tries to hold, but he went around on a fastball off the plate, and it's three and two. He just hate that when the home plate umpire calls the, the half swing. He always wanted to check out with the base umpire. I don't know, you think the base umpire has a much better view than the home plate umpire? Yes, I do. Three and two with one out. And Guillaume hits one back up the middle. That's a base hit. They had the shift on, but nobody playing behind the bag, and Guillaume is two for two. So he continues to pepper holes in the shift. And the Mets have two men on in the eighth. Well, Guillaume is quite the little pesky hitter. Came into the game hitting 320, and with the two for two, he's going to add on to that. Now hitting 331 for the year. So two aboard with one out. And here's Escobar driving around with the sack fly in the fourth, trying to shed an 0 for 23 skid. With Davis at second and Guillaume at first and one out. Nets up 4 0 in the eighth. And Escobar has to move out of the way of a slider from Nance. Ball one. It has happened since day one of this season. That pitcher is getting plunked at an historic rate. Slice foul, one and one. The major league record for getting hit by pitches in a season for a team is 105 that was set last year by the Cincinnati Reds. The Mets are now on a pace to be hit 117 times. Which would easily outstrip that record. And notice Mr. Escobar with no body armor. And Escobar with an ugly cut of the slider, and it's one and two. That's only have two position players who have not been hit by a pitch this year. Escobar is one of them, and Guillaume is the other. Nance ahead one and two. And that skips away from Stallings and the runners will move up. Second wild pitch of the day for the Marlins. And now Davis at third and Guillaume at second. Well Nance had difficulty. The first game of the series gave up the granny. Not a really good block by Stallings, a gold glove catcher, very awkwardly going after that ball. 
Now the infield comes in with second and third and one out. A two and two count to Escobar. He's already got a sack fly in this game. And the slider misses high, and it's three and two. First base open, Nito on deck. So Escobar is not likely to get a fastball to hit. Oh, he tried to quick pitch him there. No dice. A hit batsman, a base hit, and a wild pitch put two in scoring position. Three and two to Escobar. And Eduardo slashes that one foul. He did get a fastball. In the ninth, the Marlins will have six, seven, and eight in the order. Stallings, Encarnacion, and De La Cruz to bat. They do have one left handed pinch hitter. That's Lewin Diaz. Again, the 3 2 to Escobar. And he hits one toward the middle. That'll go through for a base hit. Davis is in. Here comes Guillaume. He'll score. Eduardo Escobar snaps his 0 for 23 with a two run single. And the Mets have broken it open. It's 6 to nothing, New York. Sit down, Edwin Diaz. Way to go. Big spot to break that 0 for, for Escobar. As he drives in a pair. Inside pitch. Just went right up the middle. And you got the big space there. Two outs. No, one out. But no one's going to catch that ball. Good jump. Not going to have a play on Guillaume. Let's yeah. continue to put the ball in play. Hit it where they ain't. Make good things happen. And now Nito has to spin away from the fastball. That look has become ubiquitous. Too much. Breaking ball sits high two and oh the Mets have now struck out as a team their hitters the second fewest times of any team in the league. And that has led to the highest on base percentage. Yep. And the most runs scored per game of any team in the league. Mel Stoudemire Jr. the pitching coach is going to go out and talk to Dance. There's nobody up behind him. It's six nothing in the eighth so he's going to have to ride this one out. That's the only out he got in this inning was the hardest hit ball Canna that rising liner to short that Rojas made a terrific play on. But he hasn't gotten anybody since. That last hit by Escobar 67 miles an hour off the bat but well placed. Three and to Nito with Brandon Nimmo on deck. That's now with six runs and nine hits today. Escobar at first with one out. Nito is 0 for 3 on the afternoon. And he takes a strike. Nito starting his fifth straight game for the second time in the last two weeks. He has really been a workhorse. James McCann's return is on the horizon now. He's played three rehab games. There's ball four. So they're working Nito a lot now, knowing that he's going to be sliding back into a backup role fairly soon. So four straight have reached base for the Mets here in the eighth. Well, two have scored, and now Nimmo, who's already got a three hit game, will come to bat. Nance is having a nightmare uh, series here. 
He's bookended this series. Gave up the grand slam to Alonzo in the first game. He's already given up five earned runs in this series, and he's got ducks on the pond. Can't find the plate. Nimmo takes a first pitch curve out of the strike zone. Nimmo has two career four hit games. One five hit game. All those came in 2018. He's got a chance for a four hit game today. Two singles and a double. He scored two runs. Nice day for Brandon, who had been struggling in this series before today. And he takes that slider for a strike, and it's one and one. Still wants to throw that curveball. And Brandon had been two for 13 over the first three games of this series. For a three for four afternoon, raising his batting average back up to 270. And the fastball away, two balls and a strike. Not a hint of action in the Miami bullpen. So he's going to have to wear this inning no matter where it ends well, up. That's where we're going, the old Houston Astro uniform. <laughs> Looks just like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Marlins are heading home to play Colorado tomorrow. Trying not to waste any more bullpen today. Two and two now to Nemo. And he got him with a breaking ball. So there's the second out of the inning as Nance strikes out Nemo, two down. If he can get that curve over with any kind of consistency, you know, he'd, it's a good pitch, but. He's uh, too erratic. Our friend Mark Simon at Sports Info Solutions just had a great comparison. Comparing this Mets team with your 1986 team. And I think it's fair to say that most of the teams around the National League did not particularly care for your group in 86. You right. You weren't a beloved team by other teams. That team got hit the entire season 31 times. That's because we were quick. This team has already been hit 50 times in less than <laughs> half a season. So you're saying you guys were just better at getting out of the way? We had to. I, th I think that with the body armor and they can't throw inside. Uh, don't throw inside enough. They're starting to throw inside now. Well, obviously. <laughs> and also, I think with the increase in the rosters, Gary, and the whole month of April, it was a 29, mainly in the bullpens, a lot of AAA pitchers, a lot more wild pitchers in the game today. Guys rip it and rip it, don't know where it's going. And I'd say. For the most part of the 50 times the Mets have been hit and all the other times they've come close. There's a ball four and Marte is on with a walk mm. to load the bases second walk of the end. I, I would say probably none of them has been intentional. Is that fair to say? I mean you can't think of a well instance this year where a pitcher intentionally hit a Met hitter. I'm trying to think there's so many it's hard to I, I you know you're going to overload a computer. I mean, when Yoan Lopez threw up and into Nolan Arenado, that was judged to have been intentional, and he got suspended for it. But nobody's been suspended for throwing at a Met, at least not yet. There's Lindor with the bases loaded. This is where you want to fatten up your average here. Don't give away this at bat. You got some ducks on the pond. Get a nice base hit here. Door is one for four. The one was a broken bat single, but he's had two really hard hit balls into outs. Oh, and that just missed. And Mr. Porter squeezed them. You know, a lot of times when you're all over the place, the umpires aren't going to give you that pitch. They get caught by surprise when you throw it for a strike because you haven't been. Escobar at third, Nito at second, Marte at first with two out. And Lindor pounds one into the ground, one and two. By the way, in that 86 season, you were hit four times. That's because I was quick. Carter and Strawberry each led the team with six. Mets already have three guys who've been hit more often than that. This we got in all those fights. We got all offended. Wally, zero. 
Lenny zero didn't get hit all year. How's that possible. One two coming to Lindor and the curveball fouled off. That is a nobody hit your little pesky guys all year. Well you wouldn't want to give them a free uh, yes, free base no. get them on base particularly with you know three four and five coming up. Well you guys were formidable. <laughs> it was a pretty good three four five. I'd have to say. Lindor choking up on that bat. 38 pitches already in this inning for Tommy Nance. Yeah, I wonder how many curveballs. Boy, oh boy. One two to Lindor. And he struck him out with a high fastball. So Nance finally puts an end to the bottom of the eighth. Mets tack on two more runs on the Escobar hit. Six nothing as we go to the ninth. Yoan Lopez, his first big league outing since the first of May. We'll try and close this game out for the Mets. That is courtesy of Mr. Escobar's two RBI. It took the made the decision easy for Mr. Showalter to bring in the the youngin. He's older than the other guy. <laughs> Lopez, 29 years old, his third outing for the Mets. Jacob Stallings leads off in the ninth inning. And takes a fastball up and in for ball one. Mets are bidding for their 11th shutout victory of the season. It's a lot of shutouts. This is only the 69th game the Mets have played this year. Stallings one for two in a walk today. And the breaking ball misses high and it's two and oh. The Yankees lead the major leagues with 11 shutouts. Mets have a chance to tie them if they can. Put up a zero in the ninth. And the Mets are trying for their 16th series victory against three series losses. Pretty consistent. That's the way you have a big year in series after series. No question. And also to improve their division record to 22 and 8 and improve their home record here at City to 24 and 10. It's a lot of numbers. And they're all good. They're all good. That's why I brought them up. Positive note before we fly. 2 0 to Stallings. And now 3 0. David Peterson went 5 and a third, allowed no run, six hits. Really a terrific outing for Peterson, who was in a lot of trouble, but stayed calm and found his way through. Looks like he's going to improve his record to 4 and 1. Lowered his ERA to 3.18. That's nice. And that's ball four. So Lopez comes in and issues a four pitch walk, not the beginning that he or his manager wanted. That is a no no. Just told Pete to play behind him. Adam Adovino got five outs. Drew Smith got three. Now Lopez looking for his first. Or first two with Gerard Encarnacion, who grounded into a double play against Ottavino his last time up. Encarnacion, one day after his remarkable first big league game yesterday, has hit the ball on the ground three times, once into a double play. And Lopez misses with a sinker to start him off. Well, guarantee the everyday players out there, Lindor, Pete, who both of them. Have only missed one game, and that was due to what Pete got hit in the hand, and then Lindor with the fractured finger, if you recall. There's a strike. They want to get in the clubhouse, get showered, and get to Houston. And the last thing the Buck wants is to have to get Diaz back up. Correct. Fouled away, and it's one and two to Encarnacion. Brian De La Cruz waiting on deck. Mets are trying to improve to 20 and 4 in games after a loss, which is just stunning. Slapped on the ground, a chance for two. Guillaume made the backhand flip, and Lindor has to stretch for it, so no chance to think about well, the double play. That was very, very risky. 
ball hung in the air a long time. Aguirre says, "My bad." Just make sure one. You're not going to turn to, but he he knew what he was doing. He got it there, but he's very adept at what he does in the field. Los Manos. Luis Guillorme. One out and one on. Here's Brian De La Cruz, who's 0 for 3, struck out twice and flied out. The slider off the plate from Lopez, ball one. Juan Lopez, 29 years old, native of Cuba. Four years in Arizona before coming to the Mets. Best year was in 2019. He was in 70 games for the Diamondbacks that year. But his most memorable moment as a Met was the pitch he threw close to Nolan Arenado that sparked a bench clearing incident in St. Louis, which earned him a suspension. And that comes inside, and it's ball four to De La Cruz. Oh, yeah. So two walks in the inning, and that'll draw him a visit from Jeremy Hefner. So Lopez unable to find the plate. Diaz is not up yet, but Buck's got to be thinking about it. How many more base runners before you get your closer ready? Precisely. Maybe one more. You got the number nine hitter Luke Williams coming up. Thought maybe Donnie would go to the left hand hitter in this spot. He's got Lewin Diaz on the bench, but he's going to stick with Williams. He's gone one for three today. Well, let's see if Mr. Hefner has the antidote. Well, the Marlins have had plenty of chances today, but they've gone 0 for 8 with runners in scoring position. Williams had one of those at bats. A strikeout to end the second with two men on against David Peterson. And Williams takes a slider for a strike, nothing and one. And that's foul back. And now Lopez ahead 0 and 2. Well, never Jeremy Hefner said, perhaps it got Lopez focused on throwing strikes. Did, did you say something to me? I was talking to my producer, sorry. Fouled away. Well, here's the thing. You might have been talking to your producer, but you laughed on the air. Oh. So it sounded like you were laughing at what I said. No, I wasn't. Never laughing at what you said. Only when you were intentionally trying to be humorous. Well, maybe I was. But you don't know that because you don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the 0-2 coming. And that's on the outside corner. Got him looking at a slider. And Yoan Lopez has the second out. Okay, we're almost there. And so the Marlins are down to their final out. Series. Lopez looking to keep the shutout intact as he faces John Birdie with two out and two on. Birdie had an infield single in the third, one for four on the day. And a check swing foul, nothing in one. It's hard to take a four game series. I don't care home at home or on the road, particularly on the road, obviously, but four game series are tough. You know what helps? Winning the first two. Yeah, well, I would recommend winning the first one. One step at a time. There's a strike and it's 0 and 2. You know what's harder than winning a four game series? What? Winning a two game series. 
That's true. That's, fans. That's coming up starting tomorrow in Houston. Fans on their feet. We'll be with you at 7:30 tomorrow night for the opener of the series with the Astros. 0-2 coming to Birdie. Bouncing ball. Guillaume's got it. Makes the flip, and the ball game is over. The Mets' 11th shutout victory of the season. David Peterson five and a third for the win. Adovino, Smith, and Lopez finish it up. The Mets take three out of four from the Marlins, and they're back to 21 games over 500 as they beat Miami six nothing. Well, the Mets just kind of pecked away here. Two sacrifice flies took advantage of, of mental errors early to get that three nothing lead. Nine hits. Uh, Peterson. Really a well pitched ball game. The best slider I've seen him have. And boy, did the Mets need it and did Peterson need it. He goes to four and one. Jeff McNeil leaves with hamstring tightness. J.D. Davis gets hit on the hand. We'll have to see about those things, but the Mets keep on rolling no matter what. Six nothing the final today as they notch their 11th shutout victory.